A Malaysia Airlines flight carrying 239 individuals, including four Americans, mysteriously disappeared, marking one of the more perplexing unsolved mysteries in aviation history. This incident involved Malaysia flight MH370, which vanished without a trace, leaving the global community stunned and puzzled. For years, investigators diligently combed through ocean depths and scrutinized every available piece of evidence in their relentless pursuit of the truth behind this enigmatic vanishing act. However, what if the answers we seek are concealed within an array of novel findings and cutting-edge theories? Today, we embark on a captivating journey to unveil groundbreaking discoveries and mind-expanding hypotheses that could potentially illuminate the shadowy secrets surrounding the tragedy of Malaysia Flight MH370. Commonly known as MH370, the ill-fated flight was an international passenger route operated by Malaysian Airlines. Its intended destination was the bustling metropolis of Beijing, China, with more than 200 passengers on board, ready to either reunite with their homeland or embark on an adventurous exploration of foreign lands. Among these passengers were 227 individuals from 14 different countries, along with 12 Malaysian crew members, a diverse assembly of people crossing vast oceans and lands on March 8, 2014. Setting off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport, situated in the bustling Malaysian capital, MH370 took flight at midnight, with plans to cover a journey of approximately 5,570 kilometers over a span of about 5 hours and 34 minutes, ultimately reaching Beijing. This routine journey unexpectedly captured worldwide attention. Guided by Captain Zahari Ahmed Shah and First Officer Farik Abdul Hamid, the aircraft in question was the advanced Boeing 777-200ER, renowned for its safety features and advanced technology, highly favored by airlines for long-haul flights. All seemed ordinary as MH370 ascended into the night sky, with passengers settling into their seats. However, it inexplicably vanished from radar screens during its scheduled voyage from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on March 8, 2014, leaving a bewildering void in the cockpit. Captain Zahari and First Officer Farik were both seasoned professionals entrusted with the safety of their passengers. Around 1.01 a.m. Malaysian Standard Time, while cruising at an altitude of 35,000 feet, the aircraft transmitted its routine half-hourly data report through the Aircraft Communications Addressing and Reporting System, or ACARS. The report indicated no signs of distress or trouble on board. At approximately 1.07 a.m., the final ACARS message was sent, confirming normal operation of all systems. The subsequent update, expected at 1.37 a.m., tragically never materialized. One of the most chilling moments occurred around 1.19 a.m. as the aircraft was poised to enter Vietnamese airspace. The cockpit communicated with air traffic control in Kuala Lumpur, delivering the customary message, Good night, Malaysia 370. This phrase denoted a routine handover from one control center to another, yet this time the anticipated communication from the new center never transpired. Recent scientific revelations and theories have dramatically reshaped our understanding of the MH370 incident. These fresh insights are poised to revolutionize our comprehension of the disaster, shedding light on the enigmatic events that unfolded. Cryptic Communications and Mysterious Signals Amid the MH370 saga, a stunning revelation surfaces. The aircraft engaged in intermittent communication with an unmoving IMARSAT satellite for six hours after disappearing from radars. This discovery challenges the idea that something bad happened suddenly. Instead, it suggests the plane kept flying at high speeds and heights for those six hours. They did this by turning off some communication systems. These talks were like quick electronic messages. There were seven of them, with two started by the plane and five by the IMARSAT station on the ground. There were also two calls made from a satellite phone, but nobody answered. These conversations gave us more information. Most of them were about two numbers that probably meant data collected by someone named Kima. This is a surprising twist in the MH370 story that makes it even more puzzling. Insights from Radar Information The intricate puzzle of clues takes us deeper into the mystery. Radar information from air traffic control systems 
combined with hidden details from the Malaysian Air Force, sheds light on what happened after MH370 disappeared from radar. In a surprising turn, the plane made a sudden southwest maneuver after leaving radar range. It then changed direction over the Malay Peninsula, circled around Penang Island and headed northwest, flying over the Malacca Strait. Eventually, it vanished from radar over the vast Andaman Sea. This unusual flight, lasting over an hour, raises questions about the incident's nature, distinct from typical hijacking or known mishaps. The investigation has taken unexpected paths since the beginning. MH370's mystery has captivated worldwide attention and sparked intense speculation. Families everywhere have felt the deep impact of the loss. The idea that a modern plane with advanced equipment and multiple communication systems would disappear is baffling. In today's interconnected world, where even erasing an email is a challenge and complete isolation is rare, the vanishing of a Boeing 777 is truly intriguing. The rarity of such disappearances only magnifies the focus on these unconventional theories. Despite initial denials and attempts by Malaysian authorities and the Air Force to confuse, the truth about the plane's mysterious flight path slowly emerged. The Astonishing Course Toward Antarctica The unfolding narrative takes a remarkable twist. In an unprecedented feat, London-based technicians employed Doppler shift logs to uncover a startling truth, the precise location of the airplane. A pivotal moment occurred at 2.40 a.m. when the aircraft defied expectations with a significant southward turn over Sumatra, Indonesia's northernmost island. Despite some analysis uncertainties, experts assert the airplane continued towards Antarctica, surpassing its anticipated range. Six hours later, Doppler data revealed an abrupt steep descent, an anomaly at up to five times the regular rate. At the seventh arc, the aircraft tragically plunged into the ocean, possibly shredding parts mid-descent. Electronic traces suggest a catastrophic rather than an intentional water landing, disintegrating almost instantly into fragments. Yet unanswered questions remain. While compelling, the satellite interpretations lack solid physical evidence, leaving the puzzle unsolved within this juncture. Unveiling the Doppler value Technical data analysis provides vital insights into the aircraft's trajectory. Strongly substantiated by the second recorded value from MRSAT, referred to as the Doppler value, this discovery illuminates the plane's likely southward turn. This Doppler value gauges how the aircraft's frequency alters as it swiftly moves in relation to the satellite's fixed position, a routine mechanism for communicating during flights. While aircraft systems accommodate these frequency fluctuations for seamless communication, certain inaccuracies might arise due to older satellites transmitting signals not precisely in line with the aircraft's expectations. Factors such as satellite orbit, tilt and temperature can introduce anomalies in transmitted signals, discernible as markings within the data. The Quest for Elusive Black Boxes The narrative digs deeper into satellite-derived insights, unveiling a significant finding. MH370's flight persisted for hours post-radio silence, a detail eventually acknowledged by Malaysian authorities after initial reluctance. Skepticism arose due to Malaysia's opaque approach, amplified by corruption accusations against the government. International investigators from Europe, Australia and the US faced turbulence in their pursuit. Hurdles emerged due to withheld data and misguided initial searches in the South China Sea. Unfortunately, these obstacles obstructed locating floating wreckage crucial for identifying the plane's whereabouts and recovering its black boxes. The search led to expansive oceanic realms guided by satellite information. Australia took a leading global role concentrating on satellite-identified zones. Overcoming oceanic depths and uncharted areas posed mapping and sonar challenges. And so the story stands, a testament to MH370's perplexing enigma that has captivated the world for years. Unveiling planned routes and veiled intentions a captivating facet emerges from the tapestry of events surrounding MH370's disappearance. A layer of secrecy and premeditation shrouds the incident, hinting that this might not be a mere happenstance, but a meticulously calculated scenario. The flight's unconventional trajectory, characterized by a lack of electronic communication, 
defies easy explanation using conventional factors like technical glitches or human errors. Standard explanations encompassing computer malfunctions, control system glitches, environmental factors such as ice, lightning or bird strikes, and even rare events like meteorites or volcanic ash fall short in rationalizing the intricate path of the flight. Interestingly, a gamut of potential mechanical and human-related complications, spanning from sensor malfunctions to radio equipment anomalies and from instrument irregularities to electrical system failures, falls short in fully elucidating the deliberate nature of the flight's deviation from its intended course. Even scenarios involving elements like fire, smoke, sudden cabin pressure loss, cargo area explosions or the pilot's inability to navigate the plane do not lay bare the full narrative behind this enigmatic occurrence. The absence of preceding instances involving disoriented pilots, medical crises or external threats such as bombs or acts of war lends an extra layer of intrigue to the mystery. Navigating Toward Intrigue in Boulder, Colorado, an electrical engineer named Mike, highly regarded within an independent group, delved extensively into radar data related to a specific aircraft. Mike became convinced that during a particular maneuver the plane had ascended to an altitude of 40,000 feet, nearing its maximum capacity. This action would subject passengers to noticeable G-forces, pushing them into their seats. This observation led Mike to develop a theory. The ascent was intentional aiming to quickly depressurize the aircraft, resulting in the rapid incapacitation and unfortunate demise of everyone on board. Mike's hypothesis suggested that this deliberate depressurization could have been a strategy to manage potentially unruly behavior during the lengthy flight. The effects of depressurization would go unnoticed in the cabin, except for the sudden deployment of emergency oxygen masks. However, these masks would only provide breathable air for up to 15 minutes at altitudes below 13,000 feet. At the higher cruising altitude of 40,000 feet, passengers in the cabin would quickly lose consciousness without experiencing distress. They would remain seated, their faces cradled by ineffective oxygen masks hanging from above. Dim emergency lighting would create a subdued atmosphere, in stark contrast to the cockpit equipped with pressurized oxygen masks capable of providing hours of breathable air. As the plane surged forward, it became a mysterious blip on primary radars, speeding toward Penang Island at nearly 600 miles per hour. Interestingly, the vicinity included Butterworth Air Base, housing Malaysian F-18 fighter jets and an air defense radar. Surprisingly, there appeared to be minimal attention paid to the unfolding situation. As Mike delved deeper into his investigations, he couldn't help but be perplexed by the conspicuous lack of vigilance from air defense radar and fighter jets. The weight of his findings and their potential implications for aviation safety weighed heavily on his mind. Intrigue unveiled amidst clouds Contrary to popular belief, control of the plane wasn't from a distant spot beneath the galley, but originated in the cockpit itself. This happened between 1.01 a.m. when the plane reached 35,000 feet and 1.21 a.m when it vanished from secondary radar. In this 20-minute span, the automated system sent a routine update via satellite to the maintenance department, showing functional satellite communication. It's unlikely both pilots coordinated this, suggesting one might have been unable to function, locked out, or worse. The primary radar showed both civilian and military aircraft complicating things. Deeper investigation implies the MH370 pilot lightly disengaged autopilot due to the precision of the turn. Additionally, deliberate depressurization and deactivation of the electrical system occurred. The reason is unclear, but this disrupted the satellite link momentarily. This 150-word version encapsulates the details more succinctly. Aviators taking command in the mysterious case of MH370's disappearance, another theory gains attention – the potential role of the captain. Could the captain have taken control without using force? While unsettling, this idea has precedent in aviation history. For instance, the captain of Silk Air reportedly disabled vital recorders on a Boeing 737 in 1997 before crashing it into a river deliberately. Similarly, in 1999, an Egypt Air co-pilot intentionally crashed Flight 990 into the sea, 
resulting in loss of life. Notably, the captain of Mozambique Airlines Flight 70 tragically crashed his plane from a high altitude shortly before MH370's incident, leading to all occupants' deaths. An even more chilling instance is the 2015 German Wings Airbus crash, where a co-pilot locked the pilot out and directed the plane into the Alps. It was revealed that he'd researched MH370's disappearance a year earlier, but his involvement in MH370's case is uncertain. Described as optimistic and anticipating marriage, he lacked personal conflicts or doubts. Moreover, he flew the respected Boeing 777 not fitting the profile of struggling pilots. MH370's captain Zahari presents a complex case. While his life underwent transformation, no concrete evidence supports these theories, shrouding the fate of MH370 in mystery. Unveiling Captain Zahari's Secrets Amid escalating concerns, Captain Zahari takes center stage as a figure depicted in official accounts as an exemplary pilot and a composed family man with a penchant for flight simulators. However, beneath this facade, indicators of distress are conspicuously ignored. Law enforcement scrutiny unearthed facets of Zahari's life that warranted more in-depth exploration, yet subsequent findings proved inadequate. An assessment of Zahari's capacity to handle work-related pressures yielded positive results, and there was no historical evidence of indifference, unease, or agitation. His regular interactions with others and domestic challenges exhibited no remarkable shifts. There were no behavioral cues indicating retreat from social engagements, alterations in routines, or shifts in interests. Observations of his demeanor on the flight day, along with recordings from three prior flights captured by airport CCTV, presented Sahari as unwavering, impeccably attired and composed. His characteristic mannerisms, facial expressions and gestures remained unchanged. Nevertheless, an enigma arises when comparing the official report to what is supposedly known about Sahari, revealing discordance and the dismissal of disconcerting hints. His life was tinged with isolation and solitude, magnified by his wife's departure, propelling him into extended periods of aloneness as he eagerly awaited the intervals between flights. An affection for a married woman and a fixation on young online models he encountered on social media further coloured his existence. The exploration of his flight simulator unearthed a trajectory akin to MH370, a discovery that Malaysian investigators oddly downplayed. In light of these intricate revelations, a more nuanced portrait of Captain Zahari's circumstances emerges, suggesting a multifaceted struggle that transcends the veneer of his public persona. Following the Trail of Breadcrumbs Victor Ionello, a creative entrepreneur from Roanoke, Virginia, has garnered recognition for his dedicated investigation into simulated flights, particularly focusing on MH370. He sheds light on Captain Zahari's peculiar approach to simulating the flight's trajectory. Instead of a continuous flight, Zahari opted for manual stage-by-stage -stage progression, adjusting fuel and introducing jumps until the aircraft vanished from the simulation. Ianello proposes a unique hypothesis. Zahari's simulator flight might have been an unconventional farewell, akin to leaving a trail of breadcrumbs. This approach prompted Ianello's belief that Zahari played a pivotal role in the unfolding sequence of events. While the use of a consumer-grade simulator was not technically necessary, suspicions linger, and Ianello's perspective underscores the significance of this anomalous simulation in deciphering the enigma of MH370's disappearance. The Cyber Conspiracy Esteemed historian Norman Davis presents an intriguing concept. The plane might have been remotely hacked and rerouted to a hidden location. He suggests that cyber experts exploit a technology designed to prevent a recurrence of the 9-11 attacks, allowing planes to be remotely controlled. Davis speculates that the aircraft may have carried sensitive materials or personnel, making it a target for kidnapping attempts. While conclusive answers are elusive, Davis believes that speculation is warranted in this case. He proposes two potential hackers in a sequence, one hijacking remotely and another intervening to prevent the plane from reaching its intended destination. This theory underlines the complex nature of MH370's disappearance. The MH370 Jungle Crash Site in September 2019, British video producer Ian Wilson hypothesized that MH370 might have crashed deep within a Cambodian jungle. 
Satellite images seem to show an aircraft wedged against a mountain, prompting Ian and his brother Jackie to explore the area. Though the wreckage was found to be from a different plane, the Wilson brothers maintained their conviction and planned further expeditions when funding permits. Hidden Passenger and Mysterious Cargo A theory surfaces regarding an unnoticed passenger hijacking the plane. The presence of an unattributed 89kg load on the flight list after takeoff, along with other irregular cargo, raises questions about the motives behind these actions. The possibility of unintentional targeting by a country's military due to communication errors or mistaken identity is also suggested. Theories of a shootdown or cover-up operation are explored, but concrete evidence remains scarce. Mysterious Ringtones Taking a captivating turn in the perplexing puzzle of the vanished Flight 370 emerges an alternative theory that challenges the prevailing notion of the aircraft's crash and disappearance in the depths of the Indian Ocean. According to this novel hypothesis, there are individuals who argue that the plane might not have plunged beneath the waves at all. The foundation for this intriguing idea arises from accounts shared by several passengers' relatives. They assert that they heard ringing tones emanating from their loved ones' phones for a span of up to four days after the purported crash. Remarkably, a total of 19 families have recounted such experiences, casting a curious light on this mysterious phenomenon. Among these accounts, one particularly poignant instance drew considerable attention. A family member, in a demonstration on Chinese television, showcased that he could still call his deceased brother's phone and it would audibly ring. This emotionally charged display lent a certain weight to the concept known as the ringtone theory. In support of this intriguing theory stands Paul Franks, a telecommunications expert who firmly believes that if the plane had indeed crashed into the ocean, the phones on board would not have remained functional and ringing for an extended duration. Sharing his insights on Reddit, Franks emphasized that when a phone is submerged, especially in seawater, its chances of survival and continued operation are exceedingly slim. Even if, against the odds, a phone managed to endure, it would be incapable of receiving signals from the ocean's depths. This consideration casts further doubt upon the conventional narrative of the plane's alleged crash. In light of these circumstances, a critical question emerges. Could the reported ringing tones from the families truly be signals originating from the missing plane? If the aircraft did not meet its end by plunging into the sea, where might it be now? What other factors could potentially elucidate the perplexing phenomenon of phones seemingly functioning after a supposed crash? Given this array of compelling evidence, it becomes tempting to ponder whether the initial conclusion regarding the fate of the plane warrants a fresh evaluation. Your thoughts on these captivating revelations are eagerly awaited. Feel free to share your perspective on the intriguing revelations presented on the screen. Rogue Missiles or Miscommunication Speculations point toward the possibility of MH370 being shot down during a joint military exercise or being unintentionally targeted due to miscommunication, technical glitches, or mistaken identity. However, these theories face challenges due to a lack of substantiating evidence and clear motives. Ultimately, the disappearance of MH370 remains a haunting mystery with numerous theories and interpretations. The truth, though, continues to elude us.